I didn't get a countdown, so I don't know if I uh, hope, hope it's recording. So, <clears throat> hello, everyone. This is, oh, I'm kind of in the way over here. Oh, oh. oh man. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I guess that'll, that'll be all right. So, this is what the, and I know for those of you that haven't been here, and so this was online in terms of this not having a hard copy of this um, and then having the PDF file like sideways, um, that's, that's kind of bad. And I don't know if you can even use Doc Hub or if you could actually print this out or if you had to like like sketch this whole thing in your cut book. But um, this part here is like, this is critical to kind of rounding out a lot of the, the finishing touches to this unit. So you were supposed to go through, and again, the directions were draw the correct number of electrons in the elements corresponding energy levels using the general map of valence electrons. Assume that all elements have a net charge of zero. So like I had said in the instructions and kind of did the first couple with you. For hydrogen, having a proton number of one, that means it only has one electron and it goes in the number one spot, which is above the nucleus. Then over here, helium has two protons and therefore two electrons as well. And that one of them goes in the number one spot, one in the number two spot, and they just keep going. Now I color coded mine and I'm hoping maybe you can tell the difference between, because some of my electrons are blue and some of them are red. Can you tell which ones are the red ones here? Why are some red and some blue? I hope you're thinking about that and may be able to conclude that it says you're supposed to draw the correct number of electrons, blah, 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 energy levels using the general map of valence electrons, which, and I don't know if we had this before, but um, actually I think some of you had written this down and some of you had not. I can't remember which classes I got to this in. So this, oh gosh, I'm in the way. So this, um, I guess I could have done, oh, that doesn't work. We had talked briefly after the elements lab in some of the classes about this. So you're going to need to make sure this is in your comp book for notes because a group or a family in the periodic table, it is a vertical column of elements in the table. They have similar characteristics and they have the same valence number. And then I told you what valence was. Valence means the outermost, which is what this worksheet is talking about. The outermost energy level that actually has electrons in it for an atom. So there's not like a specific level that is the valence level for all atoms. It's the outermost energy level for a given atom that actually has electrons in it. Okay. And then the valence number, of course, is the number of electrons that are in that outermost level. So hopefully you've written this down. If not, pause it and write it down because I'm going to go back to the other slide. So this that we were going to be talking about here, this then, I hope you're seeing that the red ones are what can you see because we don't even have any blue ones till we get down to lithium and then, so lithium the first two are blue and then this one's red and then again two blue ones here for beryllium and then two red ones and then i hope you're seeing that the red ones are the outermost electrons like for hydrogen it only has one it is the outermost for helium it only has two those are the outermost electrons in the first level, outermost. Lithium, its outermost electron is now in the second energy level. First energy level has two. It's full with two. And then the outermost is the red one. So all my red ones here are my outermost. The blue ones are the inside ones. 
Now, this is what the dot arrangement should look like. This is what the little, you had a map down here in the lower right corner of the worksheet and it told you where all of these dots were supposed to be and this is what it should look like. They are not randomly placed. They are very specifically placed in these electron energy levels. Now, if we look at the questions here, it says at the top of the, of the second page, it says octet rule states that a full outer or valence shell holds eight electrons. Helium is an exception to the octet because it only has one shell. Do you remember how many electrons the first shell can hold? Two, right? And so that means helium over here, it has a full outer level with only two electrons. It can't have an octet, it can't have eight, because eight won't fit in the first level. So helium has a full first level with two. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Which elements have full outer shells? Give the name and symbol for each. Well, on our little chart here, we have helium is full with only two. Neon has an octet, two, four, six, eight in the outer level. And argon has an octet, two, four, six, eight in the outer level. Hmm. That's it. Those are the ones that have an octet. Got that? So there's an octet. The others don't have an octet, just this one, this column right here. Now, it says, what do you notice about the location of the elements in question one? I just said they're in the same column, which is called a group, which is called a family. Remember that. Number three, which elements have only one electron in the outer shell? Well, as you scan the table here, hopefully you see, oh, Hydrogen, and lithium, and sodium, and potassium. Oh, look at that. Those all only have one. And again, that's why I made them red, so it was kind of obvious, okay? There's only one in the outer level for the whole first group, or the first family. Okay, let's see. And it says to give the name. Of each what do you notice about the location of the elements in question three well, we just said they're all in the first group first column first family hmm what do you notice about the number of electrons in the outer shell as you move from left to right across the periodic table oh no across a period in the periodic table oh so hold on here these are called groups. These are called periods. If you get the table out that I gave you, the periodic table that was my Christmas gift to you, um, there are bold numbers on the sides here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes down to seven. Those are the period numbers. So hydrogen and helium, that's the first period. Lithium here, that starts the second period. The third period starts with sodium. The fourth period starts with the potassium. Each of those rows is a period. Each of the columns is a group. And there's actually 18 of those. I hope you've noticed that like on the full table, beryllium, it stops and then jumps all the way across to the other side, and then you get boron and carbon and nitrogen, and it goes across there. So there's a big gap in the middle that we've kind of closed it and we've brought those in together. I hope you're noticing that, that these are on the far right of the table, these are on the far left of the table, and then this gap that is normally there, we kind of took it out so that we could smash all this together. And then of course we have potassium and calcium, which is the fourth beginning of the fourth row, and then we stopped there. So just the top 20 here, as you can see. Now, where was it? Okay, so groups. Group numbers, period numbers. You're going to need to know about that, okay? It's kind of like Battleship or Bingo or something where you have columns and rows, and it, tell, it, it can give us an idea of where an element is. So, like, if I had asked you, um, 
hey, which element is in um, group two, period two? Well, the second group, this is the first group, second group. So group two is here. Period two, that's period one, period two. So beryllium would be the element that is in group two, period two. It just gives us a grid where we can identify locations of the elements. Okay, again, groups are the columns, also called families. Periods are the rows. Okay, so that there's something to file away. You may need to write that down. Uh, groups. Well, I you already saw that. That was that was on this page. Groups are the vertical columns, and oh, I'm in the way again. So groups are the vertical columns. Families, also known as groups. And then I just told you that the horizontal in the table, those are called periods. You may want to add that to where you wrote down about groups. Now, it says, we kind of got off track there. It says, what do you notice about the number of electrons in the outer shell as you move from left to right across a period in the periodic table? Well, this one goes from one to two. Okay, goes up one. Lithium goes from one to two here to beryllium to three here for boron and then to four for carbon and then five for nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six for oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for fluorine and then two, four, six, eight, eight for neon. So apparently as you go across the period, it's going up by one as you go across. Hmm. Interesting. Number seven, what do you notice about the number of energy levels as you move down a group in the periodic table? Oh no, I skipped one. Number six, what do you notice about the number of electrons in the outer shell as you move down a group? Forgot that, that's an important one. As you move down a group in the periodic table, well, let's look at the first group. First group is first column. One, 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 one. Hmm. Two, two, two. Three, three. Four, four. Five, five. Six, six, seven, seven. Two, eight. Eight. Now remember, eight's full. It's an octet. Helium is also full, but it only holds two. So that's the exception of the octet. But I hope you're noticing the groups all have the same number of outer electrons, which I already told you when, when I told you this. So Families or groups, they have the same valence number. Well, now you know what exactly what that means. It means the outermost energy level of electrons, they have the same number of them in a group, which we're seeing now in our electron pattern. Okay, We're seeing that here, that the groups have the same valence number, the same number of outer electrons. All right, moving on. Uh, Number eight says, each group in the periodic table is called a family. Elements are organized into families according to their physical and chemical properties. Identify the elements that belong to each family from your electron energy levels based on the number of valence electrons. Now, oh, before we even get to that, um, I hope if, you're, if you have the periodic table out that I gave you, I hope you're looking at that right now, and I hope you're looking in the boxes of some of these elements. And there are some numbers that we've been ignoring that in some of the classes, somebody asked me about these, and then I kind of said, well, we'll get to that. Um, I hope you're seeing there are little numbers on the sides of the boxes. Do you see that there's little numbers on the side? Little numbers on the right side of all the boxes. I hope you're noticing something about those numbers. I'm going to start writing some of those down on here the way they look on your table and i hope you're going to like make the connection here okay so now i have to get oh, oh no now is this going to work i don't even know i think i'm in the way here i'm in 
Oh, I don't like the way this is. Oh, gosh. What is happening? I got to get... Okay. I think it's going to work out. Okay. There's a one up here. Hold on. I got to get... I gotta get myself out of here. Out of the way. There's a two. Oh gosh. I tell you. Not my day. There's a two right here. And then when you look down here, lithium, there's a two, and then there's a one. And then there's a two and a two. And then there's a two and a three. And a two and a four. And a two and a five. And a two and a six. And a two and a seven and a two, and an eight. And I hope you're seeing what those numbers are telling you. They're telling us how many electrons there are in each level. And the further down you go, the more numbers there are because there's more energy levels there. Oh, I don't think, I, oh, we didn't answer number seven. Gosh, it says, what do you notice about the number of energy levels as you move down a group in the periodic table? Well, this will make this more obvious. I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm, I'm going to keep writing the electron numbers down. You follow along on the table and look at where I'm, hopefully where I'm looking or where I'm thinking to where I'm writing these numbers down and then you're seeing where I'm getting them from, I hope. And so sodium, there should be a 2, an 8, and a 1. And then a 2, an 8, and a 2, and a 2, an 8, and a 3, and a 2, an 8, and a 4, 2, 8, 5, 2, 8, 6, 2, 8, 7, and 2, 8, 8. I hope you're seeing what's happening. And then we have a 2, 8, 8, 1, and a 2, 8, 8, 2. Now, what are we looking at here? For the first period, how many electron energy levels are there with electrons in them? One. For the second period, how many electron energy levels are represented or have electrons in them? Two. For the third period, how many electron energy levels are represented and have electrons in them? One. Two, three. Three levels. The first level, the second level, first level has two, second level has eight, third level has one. And then starting with the fourth period down there, we have how many electron energy levels represented? Four. We got the inner one, we got the second one, we got the third one, and then the fourth one now has an electron in it as well. And we see that in our electron numbers. So on the sides of the boxes, that we, we, we kind of been ignoring those numbers. Those tell you how many electrons there are in each electron energy level. Which means that the bottom one, the bottom one, notice we have a 1, 1, 1, 1. And if you look down below potassium to rubidium, cesium, and francium, you'll see all of them have a 1 as their bottom electron number, which is the outermost electron number, the number of electrons in the outermost energy level. All right, and again, twos, two, two here, and then three, three, three. If you keep, if you keep looking down the boron group all the way down, aluminum and uh, silicon and germanium and all those, they're all right in the same group that have, or no, silicon, germanium. I'm in the wrong. I'm I'm, I'm in the wrong family. Um, that was uh, tin, tin and lead. Am I right? Oh my gosh, no, gallium and indium. Oh my gosh, I'm not even in the right family. So anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So these little numbers here, those are called the valence numbers. That's where you can find them. Okay. They are the bottom electron number for each of these little boxes in your periodic table. That's how many electrons there are in the outermost energy level. The last one, the bottom one. Okay. So that's that answers number seven. Um, Let's see, then, oh, you were supposed to write down what elements are in each of these families. Now, there are four family names that you need to know, okay? Four of them that you need to have memorized. And I hope that as you wrote these things down, uh, I mean, 
I'm just going to write down what you should have already seen and noticed here. So this, oh gosh, I'm in the way again. So let me get, oh gosh, this is going to be a long video. I'm sorry. So we have the alkali metals, alkali metals. We have the alkaline earth metals. And over here we have what's called the halogens. And then up here we have the noble. Oh no, oh no. Gases, the noble gases. Those are the four families you really need to know the names of, all right? Now, you don't have to memorize which elements are in the families. You just need to know where they are on the table so that if I ask you about, say, magnesium, then you'll be able to look at the table, see where magnesium is, and then know, oh, that's in the second group, and the second group is the alkaline earth metals. So, again, you don't have to memorize all of the elements' names in each of those families. You need to know the family's names and where they are so that when you're asked about a certain family of elements, you can find out and find them and find out what they are. All right. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about each of these, well, three of these families anyway, in, in just a second um, that you'll need to add to your notes somewhere. Um, but this worksheet also talks about this group and this and then this and then this one, and they have names for them as well, but they're kind of basic, simple names all right so the boron they call it the boron family i call it the boron group so for these other ones what is happening for these other ones i call it the boron group boron group oh boy the carbon group the nitrogen group the oxygen group. Now you can call them families if you want. I call them groups because, well, it's, it's not a big deal. Now, here's, again, here's what you're going to have to be able to do. If I ask you, hey, um, what family is phosphorus in? Then you need to be able to locate phosphorus on the table and then look up and realize, oh, this isn't one of the four one of the four main families. And so its name is literally just the nitrogen group. So phosphorus is in the nitrogen group because the group is named for the top element in that group. Again, groups are the columns, groups are the families or columns in the table. Okay. So these, the boron group, carbon group, nitrogen group, oxygen group, there's nothing to memorize there except that it's called a group. Nothing to memorize. And in fact, noble gases, you don't have to memorize that because it's already on the table for you. It's on your table. It says noble gases at the top of this column. Group 18, noble gases. Um, oh, speaking of group 18. Now, your tables, the ones I gave you, they have Roman numerals. Roman numeral A, like I think this one is Roman numeral 1A, 2A. 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, 8a, but then all the transition elements in the middle, those are like 1b, 2b, 3b, like there's, it's different. When we're talking about group numbers, it's 1 through 18. It goes all the way across the table, starting with 1, starting with alkali metals as group 1, and it goes 1 through 18 all the way across, okay? And the period numbers are 1 through 7 from top to bottom. So, Forget about the Roman numerals like the, that. I'm not. Yeah, that's the one thing about that table that I don't like. The one that I gave you is that they have the group numbers broken into A's and B's and all Roman numerals. It's just one through 20. I mean, one through 18. All right. One through 18, starting at the left with number one, going all the way to the right with number 18. Now, 
the alkali metals, alkaline earth, halogens, and noble gases. If you'll notice, again, the alkali metals all have one for a valence number. The alkaline earth all have two for a valence number. Now the boron group are all threes, the carbon group are all fours, the nitrogen group are all fives, the oxygen group are all sixes, and the halogen group are all sevens. Now the noble gases are eights except for helium because it can only have two in the first level and that's full with two. So that's the exception to the octet, remember. Now I'm going I'm to give you one thing to write down about this family, this family, and this family. All right. So the alkali metals, they are the most reactive elements. The alkali metals are the most reactive elements on the table. Most reactive. That whole family. Highly, highly reactive. The alkaline earth, there's not really a whole lot special about them. I mean, they have low melting temperatures and low densities and, and that kind of thing, but it's, it's not. It's not that important. I, I don't really care. Um, they're kind of somewhat reactive, um, not nearly like the uh, alkali metals. Like they're off the charts reactive. Now, the halogens, they are the most reactive nonmetals. So the halogens are the most reactive nonmetals on the table. They're on the opposite side from where the alkali metals are, opposite side, and they're nonmetals, and they're the most reactive of the nonmetals. And then we have the noble gases. They're non-reactive. Supposed to be an E and an A. Oh my gosh. E and an A. Non-reactive. So then the noble gases are completely non-reactive. So I want you to see here what, what we have is we have the most reactive elements on the far right. I, I mean left. I, can't, I don't know my left and my right. So the most reactive on the far left. We have the non-reactive on the far right. And then right beside them are the most reactive of the non-metals. So those are some things that you should know about those families, and that's about it, all right? And where they're located. You need to remember that group one is the alkali, group two is the alkaline earth, group 17 is the halogens, and group 18 are the noble gases. You need to know that. Let's see, I think that might be it. That might be it, um, I think. on this thing. Oh, what does it say here? Oh, it says predict the number of outer valence electrons in each of the, so for number, oh no, number nine. Oh, in what group or family would you classify hydrogen? Give at least one reason. So there is some debate about where hydrogen fits. Okay. Because this is known as the alkali metals. Well, what isn't hydrogen? It's not a metal. It's a non-metal and it's the only non-metal on the left side of the table. So does it really fit here? Well, it has a valence number of one. It's also highly reactive. So hydrogen is highly reactive. It's a number one valence number. So it fits in group one. But some folks have it over here on top of the halogens right next door to helium. So a question would be then, why, why would some folks put hydrogen right here? Why would H be right here why do you think some folks think that hydrogen fits here with the halogens now I want you to think about electrons electrons in terms of the halogens why would hydrogen fit here over here again it fits over here because it has one electron right in the outer level the rest of the halogens they have seven 
that's obviously not one. However, how many electrons do the halogens need to make an octet? They have seven, and they want eight, which means they're one short of an octet. How many does hydrogen need to complete its first level? One. So hydrogen also needs one electron to fill the outer level because it only holds two, remember? And then it would become kind of like helium in terms of the electron configuration. It would look like that. So it's one short of a full outer level. All the halogens are one short of a full outer level. So in some ways, hydrogen kind of behaves like a halogen because... I mean, it's a gas, like the top two, I mean, at least fluorine and chlorine, those are both gases as halogens. They're also highly reactive non-metals, which hydrogen is. So some, some periodic tables have hydrogen shown in two places, one over here with the alkali metals and one over here with the halogens, because it kind of has, it kind of, kind of fits both categories. So that, that answer is number nine. Number 10, you're just supposed to predict what the outer valence number is for barium. And barium is in, oh, excuse me, in the, the uh, alkaline earth metals. So its valence number would have to be a what? A two, because it's in group two with the alkaline earth metals. Now lead, which is over here with the, I believe the carbon group, yes, lead is number 82 down here in the carbon group. So it would have a valence number of four because it's in the same group as carbon. So it has, now if you look at your table that I gave you, you'll see the electron numbers and the bottom one is a four for lead. Xenon, which is two below argon here, eight, eight. I'm guessing it's going to be an eight because the noble gases are eights with the exception of course, of helium. And then iodine, which is a halogen, it's below um, um, uh, bromine, sheesh, which is below chlorine. And so it's a seven for a valence number. And again, if you look at the table that you have, you look down there and the bottom electron number is a seven. So I hope this makes sense in terms of electron stuff, families, uh, Again, you need to know those things. Now, I have posted on Classroom the review, which has a bunch of stuff in it. You have to be able to determine whether something is a metal, non-metal, or metalloid based on its location in the table, which we had talked about before. You need to be able to identify where the families are located on the table. So these four families here, again, noble gases is already there, so that's one you can check off the list, but you need to remember where the halogens are, where the alkaline earth metals are, and where the alkali metals are on the table. Uh, you need to be able to find the valence number for elements. You need to be able to understand what the mass is and how neutron number and proton number uh, control the mass of the atom. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Mm, period and group numbers. So period numbers and group numbers to find locations of the elements. So all that stuff's in there. Uh, if you have any questions on any of that, be sure to email me uh, and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Uh, but that is the review that those are the kinds of questions that will be on the test. All right. As well as the elements lab that we did with, uh, Characteristics of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids, like remember uh, being ductile and malleable and having a high luster, or being dull and brittle and poor conductors of heat and electricity, and then how metalloids have both some of both characteristics. So you need to know those things. So I'd be looking at your elements lab and the fill in the blank parts that you had to. to answer questions on that's going to be on there as well so 
the next class then we'll go through the review and hopefully clear up any questions you might have and then hopefully you're going to be ready for the test so sorry the video is so long i mean it, I, it seems like i say that every time but hey i gotta try to get you the information as best i can and so this is the conversation you missed if you were gone today so hopefully you're doing well and hopefully we'll see you soon see ya